resilient Condor's effort. Seems like we say it every night, and this team finds a way and gets it done. What did you think tonight? Yeah, I thought it was a uh, gritty effort. Um, I saw 20 players demonstrate the, the will to keep, keep working for each other and, and the will and want to continue playing. And um, super proud of our team. It wasn't easy. Um, we found ourselves down in the game, but we stuck with it, stuck with it. And normally we say it's a 60 minute plan, but tonight it was a 61 minute plan and uh, nice to see us rewarded. Couldn't have been, I can't imagine it was the way you drew it up with a five on three right off the hop, but a huge job by your penalty kill to kill off that five on three, which is basically a full two minute power play. What'd you think of the PK tonight, especially being able to bounce back uh, after Friday night? Yeah, I thought it was interesting because um, number one, the PK was excellent. Uh, two of our most important penalty killers were in the box. I thought um, didn't necessarily agree with some of the calls that were made early. Uh, to me, I've seen them get almost a full two minute four on three and a full two minute five on three in game one and game two. Um, so it was disappointing uh, to see um, us face that adversity right off the bat, but full credit to our players. I mean, you talk about warriors who laid it on the line to make sure we got that kill. Um, they were excellent. And, um, you know, I thought it was a big factor in us uh, getting into the game and, uh, and finding our way. So full credit to the penalty kill tonight, obviously. Uh, don't want to see that moving forward. Open up for questions. Hey, Jay, uh, obviously Skinner was tremendous once again. Uh, just a lot of what I would say, I don't know, have the actual count, but grade A chances, time and again, making these saves to keep you in the game. W what can you say about him that you haven't said? I think I've used uh, pretty much every adjective in the English language to describe Stewart and uh, uh, his performance, not only during this playoff, uh, first two games, but also on the year. I mean, I'd have to be a wordsmith or a word engineer to, to be able to um, accurately describe how I feel about him. Um, what I saw out there was somebody who refused to lose, somebody who looked down the rink 200 feet and saw uh, an opponent that was playing exceptionally, and he decided that he wasn't, uh, he wasn't going to lose to him. And so for me, that was uh, what you want to see in your athletes is that um, desire to win and uh, do whatever it takes. And, you know, the game was 2-1 um, for a long time. And Stewart, by hook or by crook, found a way to make the save, kept our team in the game. And our, you know, our team had good chances as well. We had a couple crossbars. We were right on the doorstep numerous times. Uh, but like I said, it took uh, full 60 to make sure the game was tied and it took 61 minutes to make sure we got the win. Coach, would you say there's more pressure coaching and playing in, in an elimination game like this tonight? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I think uh, we're driven to win every game that, that we're in. Um, as a coaching staff, uh, our job is to block out the noise for our team it's to accurately paint a picture um, for what needs to happen in the game in order to get the result that we want um, we're far from perfect uh, we never are perfect um, but we gritted and grinded and greased our way um, to a win and at this time of year that's what it's all about and um, you know I saw I saw players competing for each other. I saw, um, you know, standing in the pit behind the bench. I, I saw people who genuinely care about each other and uh, were willing to pay a price to win. And um, to see those those players commit to that and find a way, I think uh, it bodes well for us moving forward. And um, you know, just like we didn't uh, overcook or overanalyze uh, game one. We talked about making sure that we enjoy the win, but uh, we're not gonna overcook or overanalyze game two. 
it's about uh, moving the needle here and, and pressing forward to make sure we're prepared and ready to execute in game number three. Is there any advantage for you guys tomorrow with home ice at all? Well, you know, I think we're comfortable at, uh, at home. I think our players uh, feel good about our facility. It's nice to play in front of your own fans. It's not, it's a right we earned um, in uh, 39 games in the regular season. And uh, it's, it's, um, you know, it's nice to be at home. How beneficial is it for, for your team, for your group to be playing in, in these high state games when, you know, let's face it, there's, you know, 30 teams in American Hockey League, 23 teams aren't playing playoffs, but you guys are in, you know, as you mentioned, the trenches in the pits, you know, playing high stakes, really competitive postseason hockey right now. Uh, I think, um, I think a few things. Number one, let's talk about the team in general. Um, to expose this community to a high level of hockey deep in the month of May. Um, that's, that's why our coaching staff came here. Um, we wanted to make sure that uh, this organization um, got used to playing deep and, um, and showing a high level of hockey. So that's on the macro level. On the micro level, I think for uh, our younger players, to gain that experience uh, versus a high quality opponent, well coached opponent, um, under high stakes circumstances, I think that serves them individually well in the long term. And then for some of our more veteran uh, type players, I think every time you get to showcase your ability or your your um, willingness to rise to the occasion in high stakes hockey, I think that sets individuals up going forward just in their, their personal career. So there's a lot to be won um, by playing well at this time of year. And like I said, for us to be playing, you know, well into the third or fourth week of May, I think it's, um, it's a credit to those players who, who really do care for each other. They really do work for each other. And, you know, I can tell, I can speak on behalf of the coaching staff. They're a pleasure to coach. Hey, Coach, uh, real quick, I know that uh, these two teams have played some overtime classics uh, in their history. How does this one rate, and did you expect it to end so quickly? Well, uh, I think uh, when we came in in between periods, we kept our uh, information that the coaching staff relayed very brief. I think we wanted to you know, adjust a few small things. Um, we talked about being stick strong, about guaranteeing lines, about uh, uh, the line change and um, being ready when it was your chance. Uh, and as a team, we were ready to check for our chances there. We weren't, we weren't ready to cheat for chances. We were ready to check for chances. And uh, we just wanted to be ready when, when the puck was on our stick in a dangerous area. And um, I can't say enough about the play that Adam Cracknell made uh, on the wall by the benches. He had tough uh, two or three goals, uh, he was stronger on his stick than they were. And then uh, to get uh, over the blue line and create an outnumbered situation um, to get it to one of our hottest players right now in Seth Griffith. And you talk about a guy that's raised his level here in the playoffs um, and somebody who wants to win and is ready to uh, ready to strike when, when the time uh, presents itself. I thought, uh, you know, two strong veteran hockey players uh, made the play when it counted. 